Grace, come and sing them a song. It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Thanks, Grace. Chapter 3, lesson number 6, Integration by Substitution. This is the second lesson on one of my favourite parts, Integration by Substitution. The first lesson we were introduced to it and we were integrating the product of two functions. We're now moving on to look at the quotient when we are dividing one function by another. Examples 1, 2 and 3 were in the previous lesson, of oh, chapter 3, lesson 5. This is then starting with example 4 and this block of examples with integration by substitution. So, we are now using the substitute u equals 3x squared plus 1 to find the integral of x over 3x squared plus 1. Just a quick recap, remember you use integration by substitution when the derivative of one part is linked to another part. You'll notice here if we differentiate 3x squared, we will get 6x. And the x is already a part. It's at the top up here, so we're using integration by substitution. So to use integration by substitution, well, we're replacing 3x squared plus 1 with u. So really what we would do is this would become x over u. So really the whole of that bottom line, the 3x squared would become u. So really we would have x over u dx. But then we would have it all written in terms of x's and u's. And we don't want that. We want it either written in terms of x and u. We're starting off with it in terms of x, but we want to now rewrite it in terms of u. So we need to find what x dx is equal to. So to do that, we go to the side over here and we write down our substitute u equals 3x squared plus 1 and then we differentiate it. So we're differentiating u with respect to x so because we differentiate u we have du and because it's with respect to x we'll have dx. Differentiate u with respect to x gives us 6x. Woo! We want u on one side x on the other so multiply both sides by dx therefore du equals 6x dx. Now that's pretty close to what we want. We're wanting to find out what x dx is equal to. Remember the bottom line becomes u and we're left with an x, we're left with a dx. But here we've got 6x dx. We don't want 6x dx, we just want to find out what x dx is equal to in terms of u. So to get that on its own, divide both sides by 6. Therefore, 1 6th du will equal x dx. What we know now then is that we are going to have x dx we will replace with a sixth du and we'll also have u in the bottom of this fraction. So we will have one sixth. We will also have this as one over u and we will have our du. Just write it in that order so we've got any fractions, any numbers, then we've got u and then in the very end du. What this means is we are going to integrate one sixth times one over u du. And to do that, well, a sixth will just stay as one sixth. That is not going to change. And one over u, if you integrate it, what will that be, Marta? You got it, you're going to have ln u, but what do you need to remember when you are integrating and you bring in ln? The modulus sign's perfect. We're going to have the modulus sign. So we're going to have one sixth ln u plus c. From there, well, we have our answer, but it's in terms of u. We want to rewrite it in terms of x. So to get it back in terms of x, well, a sixth ln will stay as it is, but u is going to be replaced with 3x squared plus 1. So we'll have 1 sixth ln, 3x squared plus 1, and then plus c. And that's our answer. Example 5, using u equals 1 plus cos 2x. Find the integral of sine 2x over the square root of 1 plus cos 2x with respect to x. So the first thing we want to do is we're thinking u is equal to 1 plus cos 2x. What you may wish to do is to imagine this as 1 over the square root of 1 plus cos 2x and then take this sine 2x to the side. So you may wish to imagine it as 1 over 1, the square root of 1 plus cos 2x, times sine 2x dx. And if you do that, well, what you then want to do is you're wanting to rewrite that in terms of u. Now, we know the bottom is going to be u. So we are going to have the square root of u. So that'll be root u. So we can have 
the integral of the square root of u. But what we need to do now is we need to find out what, well, 1 is going to stay there, but we need to find out what sine 2x dx is equal to in terms of u. And to get that, we go off to the side, ba-dunk, 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 and we write down u, which equals 1 plus cos 2x, and we differentiate it. So differentiate u with respect to x, we'll have du by dx, and that will equal, if you differentiate 1, it's going to disappear. Differentiate cos, it will become negative sine, so we'll have negative sine 2x, but what do we also do? Good, you have to multiply by the derivative of the 2x, so we'll have negative 2 sine 2x. That's what we get if we differentiate. We want u on one side, x on the other, so multiply both sides by dx. If you do that, du will equal negative 2 sine 2x dx. Look here, what we're wanting to do is we want to find out what sine 2x dx is equal to. Well, we know that negative 2 sine 2x dx is equal to du. So to just get the sine 2x dx, just the sine 2x dx, we need to get rid of this negative 2. So divide both sides by negative 2, and that will give us negative 1 half du equals sine 2x dx. From there then, we know we can replace sine 2x dx with negative a half du. So we've got this 1 over, that became 1 over u, and we're multiplying that by negative a half du. From there then, what I would do is I would rewrite that. So you'd have a negative 1 half, and the square root of u becomes u to the power of a half, but move it up to the top line before you integrate. So we'd have negative a half u to the power of negative a half du. From there you can integrate. So if we integrate that, well negative a half will stay as negative a half. u to the power of negative a half, if you add one on, negative a half add one is positive a half. So we'll have u to the power of positive one half. But remember, when you integrate, you would divide as well by that new power. So we're dividing by a half and that's the same as if you flip the half upside down you get 2 over 1 and it's the same as multiplying by 2 over 1 which is where this 2 comes from. From there tidy that up so negative a half times 2 is negative 1 so we just have negative u to the power of half which is negative root u plus c. And finally to finish that off we want to rewrite that in terms of x. So we know u is equal to 1 plus cos 2x, so we would have negative the square root of 1 plus cos 2x plus c. And that's your answer for that one. Example 6, using u equals x cubed plus 1, find the integral of x squared over x cubed plus 1 to the power of 5. Once again, what you want to do is you want to think, right, well, I've got this substitute here. I know u is equal to x cubed plus 1. So really what I'm going to have here is I'm replacing this part here with u. So in the bottom, I would have u to the power of 5. I'm going to take this x squared to the side to show that I can split this up. So really, I would have 1 over x cubed plus 1 to the power of 5, and I've still got that x squared dx. So what I need to do is I need to find out what x squared dx is in terms of u, because the bottom line here, that will just become u to the power of 5. So I become u to the power of 5. From there then, I would have 1 over u to the power of 5 times by x squared dx. But again, I don't write it with x's and u's. I want it all in terms of x and then all in terms of u. So to get what x squared dx is in terms of u, take the substitute. u equals x cubed plus 1 and differentiate. If you differentiate u with respect to x, you would have du by dx. And that would equal 3x squared. Yes, it would. From there, get x's on one side, u's on the other, so du would equal 3x squared dx. And remember, what we want is we want to find what out what x squared dx is equal to. Well, we can get x squared dx on its own by dividing both sides by 3. So if we divide both sides by 3, we will have 1 third du equals x squared dx. After that, well, we know that this will become 1 over u to the power of 5, and x squared dx becomes 1 third du. So I'd have 1 over u to the power of 5 times by that 1 third du. 
After that, I'm just going to rewrite it. So I'll have the integral of one third, put that first, then one over u to the five. If I move that to the top line so I can integrate, I'd have u to the negative five and don't forget du. After that, you want to add one to the power. So one third will stay as it is. Add one to the power there. So it's u to the negative four and then divide by negative four. So I'd have one over negative four times u to the negative four and then plus c. After that, we've well, got a third times the one over negative four. So if I rewrite that, well, I can bring the negative to the front and then one times one, three times four, that will give me negative one twelfth u to the power of negative four plus c. After that, just going to rewrite it with a positive index. So move u to the negative four down to the bottom beside the 12. So I would have negative one over 12 u to the power of four plus c. And to finish off, what's the last thing that you would do, Fiona? Brilliant, you would rewrite that in terms of x. So you know u is equal to x cubed plus one. So you would have negative one over 12 times x cubed plus one to the power of four plus c. And that's your answer. There are some more examples then with integration by substitution when you are dividing one function by another. Try these questions in the book. It's on page 56. Give them a shot, see how you get on. Make sure you are okay before you move on to the next lesson. Best of luck. Bye.